Good morning, good evening, how are we doing out there? So today, I uh, just got done installing the cartographer, and uh, I've seen a lot of this on the Resonance uh, channel and Born Discord, and I wanted to kind of see for myself, you know, what is, what is it all about, and, and does it affect our resonance with the chip? Um, so there, there's two ones that I use to compare them. I use the EBB 36. Let me get a pencil up here because we always need a pencil. So I use the EBB 36 and the cartographer. They have two different ADXLs uh, or two different um, accelerometers on there. The cartographer uses the LIS 2DW and the EBB 36 uses an ADXL. 345. Uh, what will become evident is one is better for for the complete residence testing suite than the other. Um, so let's get into oh the residence testing we're using Frixx Shake Tune as always. It's uh, probably the most comprehensive residence testing suite out there. Um, it does rely on uh, Clipper is the back end, um, but it adds a, a lot more. So let's get into this here. Let me go down. All right, so this is the printer we're using. It's a Trident 350 Serial 1190. It is my testing platform. This thing gets taken apart and put back together routinely. So currently what we're using to test is we have several mods. We're at CAN bus with the EBB 36. The Zoll, I am using the Zoll carriage. And uh, I will say that is a pain in the butt to get those cable or the, the belts just right on that or even on that um, with, the, with the little bar they have to do it. Um, we're using 48 volt motors, the inverted electronics, as you can see, um, that Bolden tube holdy thing, majig, um, the Rama front eilers, the G2SA uh, standalone extruder. I do have a wristwatch, uh, a G, G2, um, but I haven't used it yet. Uh, we have the cartographer probe. And just for completeness, that's the version of Clipper and Shake Tune and Cartographer that we're using for this. Uh, now we got some uh, side-by-side -side pictures in here. And I did forget to include a picture. Now I got to find it. Um, a lot of people ask, how do you, how do I route my uh, umbilical cables and all that jazz? And that is the picture I forgot to include. So we'll just go to insert, new slide, and there we go. Uh, we, have to, we have to make sure everything's nice and pretty. And if you, uh, if there's any interest in this, I can post this to the Voron Discord. And you guys can take a look for yourself, um, or this this uh, file. So basically, what I got going on here is we my drawing pencil back. We'll use green this time. The Bowden tube goes over. It it continues on over here. There are uh, a zip tie that zip ties all three together here. Then I have my umbilical. If we go look at this picture here, uh, you can't really see it, but the the uh, cartographer comes up there is a slot in the uh, Zoll uh, X carriage mount to route the cable so I routed it that way for the uh, the cartographer then it's zip tied you can't see it but it's zip tied right here on top only one zip tie there and then it continues up and then I have so there's a zip tie here on my canvas to my uh, the plastic EB 36 mount then another zip tie here, and then I zip tie to here. They're all three are there, zip tie to here. And then I have one zip tie here where the cable then proceeds to fall into the depths behind everything. So this is actually behind the, uh, it will do it nice and pretty. It's actually behind the extrusion, and it goes into uh, the pie. Uh, for the ADXL config, this is what I used to test it. So I did one run with the uh, this was all uh, not commented out and the ADXL was commented out and then I would just comment um, whatever one here either ADXL chip or the uh, the LSI 2DW or the ADXL 
um, to whichever one I was using. You could, um, I could have left these and just got rid of this all together and just left, left them both there and then just swapped it out here um, with these two comments. So this is actually the critical part because this is telling which residence tester you're using, which accelerometer you're using. So let's see here what else we got going on. So these are the results. Um, I got this, I did uh, one or two passes of my belt shaper just to get them aligned in peak, or aligned in frequency. Um, I wasn't too concerned uh, about getting them 100%. There, yeah, there's a 34% delta in my amplitude, uh, which is this right here. Uh, delta. But um, I wasn't too concerned. I, I knew it'd be fine. Uh, not worried about these guys here at all. Not too much worried. So this is the first uh, foray into what, how the LIS-2DW is different. It's these guys here. You'll see that there is a lot of, uh, it's, it's, it's not ghosting, but it's like a false um, uh, harmonic that's there. And that's because the LSI-2DW is limited in its frequency capture. And you can actually see that limitation here. So it really can't do the, f the full 200 hertz. So it cuts things off. So whereas the ADX, we'll see it later, the ADXL will do this whole, all the way to here. This is cutting off at about 195. That's going to be your limit. And that will come into play later when we do vibrations calibration. You can see also, um, if you didn't run belt shaper, you just run input shaper, you can see instantly you have this whole disco um, light show. It almost makes the spectrograms um, useless. Um, I'm not an expert at reading these spectrograms, but it does make it tougher to see what, what's going on here. However, going to the important part, let's, uh, let's blow this guy up. Over here, we'll just let's see if we can see that. You can see that my um, I'm getting MZV 0% vibrations at 1330 in X. And Y comes on the scene. You can see I'm also getting MZV at zero vibrations at 5100 XL. The smoothing is a little high. Eh, no, it's all right. It's all right at 12.12. My damping ratios at 0 0.042 and 0 0.55 are what you would expect on a Voron Core XY. This is what you would expect on, on any Trident or any V2, no matter the size. You're going to be getting somewhere around here. This is not necessarily what you would expect on a V0. So these graphs, let's just see if we can let's move this guy out of the way here for a second. We'll come over here. Do -do -do. So you're not seeing too much. You okay? So this actually brings up a. Let's get the eraser out here. Let's see if we can erase this stuff here. There's one thing in these couple things in these graphs that it does. You'll see here. You get this low frequency. This low frequency here. This is an artifact of the LSI 2DW, right here. So. That's what we're going to see. We're going to see that and that. Um, what else are we going to see here? There is also an off. So this is kind of like an offset. So this should be zero, but we're up about, I don't know, less, maybe a, a quarter. Let's see, a quarter of one of these blocks is offset here. And it's the whole graph. It's not just here, but it's, it's it could just be here. I mean, I may not be able to see it there. We'll, we'll compare these graphs more in the, in the, down the line but this is basically what we're seeing here so this could either be real or not real we'll, we'll know that more when we get to the um adx cell which is there so this is our vibrations measurements it all looks good you'll see the other aspect here it can't do this all right we're uh, fricks is asking fricks in his shake tune are asking for a, a thousand hertz frequency response we're getting 190, so we don't get the full frequency response. 
Now, where does this come to play? It comes to play in this motor frequency profile. It, it, it this isn't right. It's supposed to be like kind of like this on both of these. So this is not going to be very useful um, for what's going on in, in the motor, even though this is this is right here. This is a beta, right? So it's just informational only, beta info only. But even on info only, you want you want some usefulness there. So the, but the rest of it looks great, right? Like like we got the the standard three peaks. Um, a, B axis, you'll usually get two peaks, and they'll be inter, interposed between this. So this uh, uh, part one of the residence testing, uh, I think was like an hour long video. I talked a little bit about these. These are going to be using to set your speeds and your mainly perimeter speeds, but you can also set basically all your speeds from here. Uh, X, Y, we'll just do a quick... So X, Y, you got a, got a printer, right? You have X and you have Y, right? Those are the movements. Boom, 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 boom. Like just 90 degrees. Well, A, B's are your diagonals, right? So you have uh, B here and you have A here. These are your diagonals. And then, you, you know, based on your motors in the back. So you got more room to play with on the high speed on your 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 um, on your diagonals but most of us don't print diagonally there is going to be some sort of xy step in it and so i also ran the abxy which goes through all of them and you can see uh where did my pen go okay you can see that this is a a we'll just call it ab this is ab and then this is your X and Y. This is your X and Y. X and Y. So you can see where all these spikes are coming from. And these are just your motor noise. Uh, if you have a really bad system going on, so if you got like really bad input shapers, it will affect this. But mainly this is your motors at the speed that it's being operated at. So you can see down here it's speed. And so this is how much energy is being put into the system just by the motors at that speed. So it did change a little bit. Uh, let's see here. What did it want? It said uh, where a base 100 got cut off. It's about the same. So this is what cartographer looks like. And now we're going to look at the EBB 36. So we can see right away that there's a big, there's a difference here. There's a, this, this is right here. Or, let me pull it out. This right here. You can also see that these belts are reversed, right? So let's let's pull in that EBB 36 again. All right, you see here on the bottom. Well, let's, let's 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 open up Paint. We'll do it better. It's probably easier on Paint. Let me let me uh, Control C, Control V. We'll blow that up a bit. And then we'll go back to lots of graphs. Control C. Copy pasta. Okay. So this is one difference. And it's hard to know which one's real, but it's what they're both seeing. They're almost opposites of each other by about the same percentage, by about 40%, which is interesting. I was not expecting that. So we can see here that this right here is about equal to this and that's 40 percent difference right but this is our a belt up here and this is our b belt down here this is our a this is our b up here and our a down here I wasn't expecting this and this kind of throws me for a loop because it's like which belt should you be tightening i'm gonna stick with you should be tightening the belt of the graph you're using. So if we're using the the cartographer as our baseline, as our measurement, then use that belt shaper to determine which belt to tighten or loosen. If you're using EBB, 
then use that to determine which which belt. So this is relative to what this this whole thing is a relative measurement. It's not absolute, right? It's the the relationship between A and B that the accelerometer feels. And if we look at these accelerometers, right, we have a tool head, right? Well, and here's our here's our, our we'll put our motor over here. That's our motor, right? Well, our EBB is hanging out over here. So this is EBB, right? Hanging out over here with the big old cable on it. And our cartographer, this is our cart, is hanging out over here with another long old cable going this way, right? So they're at different ends of the tool head. Neither one is at the center of mass, right? Because you really want S, you really want cog, right? You want center of gravity, which is probably for this tool head is probably around here, right? Or or it could be a little lower actually. So they're both right in the sense that it's a relative measurement to what each one is reading. So what I just if you're going to tighten your belts, they're both reading about the same. Like this is this right here in the EBB 36 is the only difference and it's not that big of a difference. You know, everything else is reversed. So I th I think I think in this situation I'm going to have to call it a tie. You know, besides this junk that it gives you over here for this test and this is this really is de minimis. I, I, it just annoys me, but it's de minimis at this 200 for this test for belt shaper. So they're about equal, right? We we can't say one is better than the other on this. They're about equal. Uh, we don't save. All right, so that's EBB 36. So then we go into belt shaper, and let's uh, our input shaper. So we can see here. Right, we're getting MZV at 31. Well, let's just let's. You know what? We're gonna do, we're gonna do we're gonna do paint again. Why not? It's easy to do. Let's just see if we can find the uh, file. Control Z, Control Z, Control V. All right, so this is EBB 36. Ooh, can I see it? Can we read it? View. Let's see. Can we do this? you zoom in how about 130 okay we can kind of read it I'll read it to you it's okay control C control V okay so what do we get well uh, this is a hundred hundred millimeters per second squared less so this is 13 the EBB 36 right this, this is right the EBB EBB 36 LIS 2DW, right? So the frequencies it's reporting, the main frequency, which is the frequency of this spike here and this spike here, they're I mean they're they're pretty damn close. The the oh, what is it? The damping ratio slightly less on this slightly more it's not critical right that's not critical though right because the difference is, is is de minimis you could run this test again and you may get that or you'll run this test again and you may get this the mzv of 67 67.2 de minimis zero 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 five oh yeah so about equal the, the the legend is telling us about equal what's the graph telling us well, we get this little hump, which we expect, right? Because we saw that in belt shaper, right? But it's down here. It's this little, this is different. That's about the same. This is a little higher for us. So this is, a, this is higher. And right here, this is lower. But there's still, it's still in the warning region. Um, we don't have the disco light show going on, which is good. Let's see. I, so, purely for this reason here, I'd have to say that the, the, the EBB, third, the ADXL 345 is better. Because this is clearer, you can see more in it. This is just, it's just, just useless, right? So we, we can't even look at that. But as the graphs go, they're about even. So they're, I'm, they're equal again. 
And so I'd have to give, if I have to give a winner, I'd say this is like a plus one. Just just because we can use the spectrogram here to look for stuff. Although, let's give it a plus 0 0.05. Because if there was a fan going off, you'd see a big old orange line right here, right? Let me get orange, because that's what you'll see. You'll see a big old orange line, like here. And then this, this one will show you a big old orange line here. And then if you have a different fan, so there's two tool head fans, and they're about like this. One is the, um, I believe this is the hot end fan. Hot end. And this is the part fan. So if you see that, that's what's going on there. And then you'll see some other stuff happening, but they'll both show it to you. So 0.5 to, to the EBB 36. Point, plus 0.5. Everything else is about even... I mean, this does bug me, this, this, because you know it's putting, you know it's adding to it. I just don't know how much, and there's no way to, I mean, we could do a boxy probe or something and figure this out, which would be another test. So, all right, so that's the X. The Y, very similar, right? Very similar. Uh, I don't think we're going to measure the Y. We'll just go back here and look at it. Let's see, that's that's what we already did. So that's 5,100. And what is this guy reporting? 5,100. 0.2, 41.8. 41, I mean, the Y is dead on. The Y is dead on. Now, we do have some differences. This is the EBB 36, right? Well, let me, let me shrink this guy down so we can all be on the same page. So this is the, we, we let's see, what do we have different? I'm looking up here. This is different. This is different here. And then it doesn't trail off. So the EBB, the uh, LIS 2DW from Cartographer, it has a little hump about 75 hertz, so slightly different. So it looks like, if we go here, we get all this junk from about 75 hertz here. And then this one, nope, run it ahead. We just have it here, but it's it's basically tails off. It trails off here, except for this hump. But I think this guy had it too at 100 hertz. No, he had it shifted. So on this one, if it wasn't for the offset and it wasn't for the spectrogram, so maybe we'll give the ADXL a whole plus one for both of these graphs. A plus one better. Uh, the ADXL 345 in the EBB 36, right? Because aren't we're not just comparing the... We are comparing the accelerometers they're using, but it's also the placement and and, and where it, what it is at, right? So if we go back to our, oh, we got rid of that, but one's on the tool head, above the tool head, one's below the below the tool head. And what do we get for? Oh, we get so this is this is where you see it shines in its vibrations, right? This is this is where our motor should be, and to refresh, our motors were, I mean, they're about 175 way up here at 175 and this is telling us 200 to something 200 to something so i mean the data is not that far off it's really not but it's not what we would expect you know we're, we're we can see here you can see all the individuals these are these are all your motor steps motor steps so you can see it kind of going through and the faster it goes the closer they get together and you know here you you don't you don't get to see it. it's like jumbled it's a jumbled mess and it's going both ways so this one I would definitely have to give this this the ADXL a better readability and what's going on here Ooh, we even got motor damping ratios now. Look at this. This is new. Fricks gave us some extra stuff. So he calculated the main motor frequency, 215 hertz, at damping ratio 0 0.39. This is 176 hertz, but at 0 0.41. So the reason that this would be low is because we're cut off. We're cut off at 200. I I would almost expect that this would read higher if this could could go higher than 200 or here's our 200 hertz right here could go higher than 200 hertz uh, the combination we can compare these guys pretty easily there we 
go. We'll just do this. So, EBB 36, uh, LIS 2DW. It seems that, you know, I don't know if this is off because it cuts off the frequency. Because we are, it is trying to figure all that out. All the, so, it's only getting data from here up to, up to 200 hertz. And then it kind of cuts off. This is getting data from one to a thousand hertz and then different speeds. So it's getting a lot more data. One to ten, one to eight. So this I mean this really shoots up in there. I don't know which I, I'm gonna believe this guy. I'm about to make a choice and I'm I'm choosing to believe this one. Although the, the general um, shapes are all the same on everything here. We got five peaks, one, two, three, four, five. The energy to the tenth, so what is that? Two, two to the ninth, twenty. So it's twenty to the eighth. So this, this right here, because it's to the tenth, because it's to the tenth, and this is the eighth. If we go, this, this would be one. This would be ten to the ninth, and it'd be one hundred to the eighth. Yeah, that's not right. So this would be four to the this would be four to the ninth or forty to the eighth. That's not right. That's way too high. Oh, way too high. So these numbers, these these values on the side aren't even comparable. Hmm. Hmm. And I I guess if you if you only had the LIS 2DW. I mean, that's what you're going to... The, the valleys are about the same. Let's see, 100. That's about 105. 95 right there. So, 95. 75 and smidgen. 70, 65. 70, it's about the same. 50. Okay, so that's a little bit... No, that's 60, 55. A little bit more here, uh, about the same. Yeah, so it's all about the peak, the valleys. So the the pertinent information, which is the valleys, appears to all be the same. So, what do I think? Uh, you know, I'm I'm st I'm gonna have to still give it to the. I I'm biased. I'm biased, as you can clearly see. They appear to be both the LIS 2DW in the cartographer and the ADXL 345 and the EBB 36 appear to be about even in the information that they relay. They do relay differently because they are in different positions. However, for troubleshooting purposes, not for the measurements, for the measurements they appear to be the same. Right, so if you're going to use this just for to put it into your input shaper and to set your speeds in your slicer, uh, either one's going to work. Either one will be perfectly fine, and, and I, I don't see a big issue. However, the caveat I'm going to throw in here is if you're using it for troubleshooting purposes, I would stick with the ADXL 345. Um, it's not cutting off frequencies. It's not adding the the offset at the beginning. And why is this critical? Why am I harping on that? Because that's binding, right? If you've watched my other videos, uh, where, did my, where did my mouse go? This area right here, this is all binding, right? And it could be giving you a false flag. It, maybe not. Maybe it does, right? I, I, I can't trust it to, to troubleshoot, though, right? Because what if this peak is not 2 to the 6, right? What if it's 2 to the 5, right? Well, that means that this, this value here is coming up more because this, these margins are based off the peak, val peak number. And maybe it does something else. How do I, or maybe there's something here, 
or, or something like that. How do I know what's real or not? And that, that's that's kind of my biggest pet peeve about the LIS 2DW. Currently, with the current software we have, it, it's just I, I don't know what to trust in the signal, right? But if you if you get MZV, right? Let's say you get MZV at zero, then you're fine, right? Then who who the shape looks good, right? You're not getting um, let's see, you're not getting MZV at zero with something like, you know, like this at least. All right? The shape looks good. And the the values are given out. So, yeah, believe it. I just don't believe the shape for troubleshooting purposes. So that's my big gripe. And that's my bias, uh, clearly. Um, so, oh, yeah. Um, I had another slide here and I, I missed it. Uh Anyway, the, the, the tension was done using as my standard tensioning, um, using the PF makes tension tool, and then following that up with belt shaper on this. So that has been our, my, at least my data that I have, res that I did for the test on once again, limited data sets. I only did it on one printer and I ran one shot of both of them and that's it. But, uh, the PF makes tension tool. Great tool. I don't get any money, no kickback from it. I just love it, and I think it works really well. So you you tension your belts with the PF makes tension tool, then you come into belt shaper, and then you you fine tune them. That's my little parting gift again. So uh, anyway, uh, hope this helps you guys in deciding, uh, or at least giving you some more information. Uh, if you need the uh, the PDF of this data, just uh, Reach out to me in uh, the forum Discord, and I can send it right to you. All right. Thanks, and have a good night or a good morning.